the fan, the fanatic, the maniac, the nut. Fans are the lifeblood of the NFL. Regardless of creed, race, or political association, fans are brought together by their love of their team. However, a beloved superfan would arise and shock the NFL world. A Bigsby bank robbery is getting a ton of attention because Kansas City Chiefs fans are convinced the suspect in the Tulsa County Jail is a popular Chiefs superfan. The superfan who fans think robbed the bank is known as Chiefsaholic. Same team's superfan family as a fucking bank robber. Yeah. What? Chiefsaholic is a career criminal. He's accused of robbing eight banks in five different states and using that money to bankroll a lavish lifestyle. 170,000 from Omaha, Nebraska. Great Western Bank in Iowa, 70,000. Another 25,000 as well. Apple Valley Savage in Minnesota. First Class Community Credit Union in Des Moines, 303,000. Oh Damn. Damn. four games, the scrimmage leaders by yardage for the Chiefs. The first five guys were not named Kelsey or Hill. They found new ways to get guys involved in the game over the last month. And that's because these guys are deep here. They're not going to give up big plays. Police received calls of a bank robbery in progress and reports that the man was armed and should be considered dangerous. The sound of screeching sirens made the man's blood run cold as he pedaled faster and faster, desperately trying to escape his fate. But it would prove futile. Chiefsaholic, a wolf suit wearing Kansas City Chiefs superfan, a man who attended nearly every Chiefs game, whether it was at home or on the road, Chiefsaholic was sure to be there. Clad in his wolf suit and red KC hat, running through tailgates and taking pictures with fans, Chiefsaholic was beloved by fellow Chiefs fans, who were also slightly envious of his lifestyle. Showing up to nearly every game with prime seating and known for betting large sums on games. His fanatical lifestyle quickly amassed a social media following. He was living every NFL fan's dream, or so it seemed. We have had the flip of the coin. A lot of Chiefs fans, Trent, here in Houston today. Fans poured into the stadium as the star-powered Kansas City Chiefs faced off against the floundering Houston Texans. But amidst the roar of fans and colliding bodies, something became apparent. Chief Saholic was nowhere to be found. And his Twitter account, where he gave live updates during the game, inexplicably went silent. No one seemed to know where he was or what had happened to him. Hours before the Chiefs game, in Bixby, Oklahoma, a man would charge into the Tulsa Teachers Federal Credit Union, gun drawn, sporting a black paintball mask, ski goggles, and a gray hoodie. He aimed the pistol square at the teller's head, demanding she give him all the hundreds the bank had, or he'd put a bullet in her head. He jumped the counter 
and forced the employee to open the vault, then ordered the employee to put the money into a plastic bag. She handed it over to the gunman and he fled the scene. However, the police had been called. Days would pass with no word from Chief Sahalik, but soon the truth would come to light. A man charged with robbing a bank in Bixby, investigators say Xavier Babadar robbed the Tulsa Teachers Credit Union near 131st and Memorial. The superfan who fans think robbed the bank is known as Chief Zaholic. Worry no longer, we have found Chief Zaholic. That's right. He is sitting in a fucking jail cell right now with a $200,000 bond. His social media profile has 36,000 followers on Twitter and 11,000 on Instagram and is very active. His arrest got national attention when some football fans became convinced that he is a well-known Kansas City Chief super fan. They used social media and the internet to try and track him down. And that's when they found this, Xavier Babadar's mugshot after he was booked into the Tulsa County Jail. Uh, and he's an armed bank robber, allegedly, that is happening right now. He's in jail. This is all alleged. But this thing could grow to who knows how many banks and unsolved robberies that have taken place. And it was all this super fan from the Kansas City Chiefs. Chief Sahalik, a.k.a. Xavier Babudar, would be arrested on December 16th after fleeing from a Tulsa bank with over $150,000 in a plastic bag and was placed on a $200,000 bond. On December 21st, police found Chief Sahalik's car where they found several pairs of gloves and ski masks, a Barstool Sportsbook bet slip for $20,000, a Fandle bet slip for $4,000, and credit union letters related to deposits of $70,000, and a tax form that showed he acquired somewhere around $150,000 in a recent year. Seven weeks would pass, and Chief Sahalik would request that the bail be lowered. The bail was reduced from $200,000 to $80,000 on the condition that he wear a GPS ankle monitor and did not leave Oklahoma. Four days before the Super Bowl, between the Chiefs and Eagles, Chief Sahalik was released on bond. Well, I feel like we might as well kick the thing off, right? The Chiefs won the coin toss, they've deferred, the Eagles will receive. It's a gorgeous day here in Glendale, the roof is open in Arizona. And we can't wait to get started. Chief Sahalik was released just four days before the Super Bowl, and he had much more than his Chiefs fandom on the line. Before the season, Chief Sahalik had placed two bets. A $5,000 bet on the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl with 10 to 1 odds. And a $5,000 bet on Patrick Mahomes to win the regular season MVP. If both bets were successful, it would pay out over $90,000. In the 2022 AP, most valuable player is... Chief Sahalik had scored it big. Patrick Mahomes. But within two months, Chief Sahalik's name would once again fill the headlines. A tamper alert had been set off from Babudar's GPS monitor. Michael Lloyd, his bail bondsman, arrived at his hotel but no one was there. Chief Sahalik would fail to appear at his court hearing. He was now on the run. Xavier Babadar is now wanted tonight on a $1 million bond for removing his ankle monitor and disappearing. Chief superfan and bank robber Chief Sahalik is on the run from the police and here's the quick story. 
Chief Saholic is still on the run after skipping court in Oklahoma for a bank robbery. Wow. Chief the judge issued a $1 million bond for him. According to court records, Babadar cut off his ankle monitor and threw it into a field near Woodland Hills. Chief Saholic was now on the run. A $1 million warrant had been issued for his arrest and he was placed on Kansas City's most wanted list. Police had found Chief Saholic's ankle monitor ditched in a field near a mall in Tulsa. And as the search went on and expanded, police investigators would discover more shocking revelations about Chief Saholic. Police had connected Chief Saholic not only to the robbery in Tulsa, but to a string of robberies throughout the Midwest. On March 2nd, a man entered a Great Western Bank in Clive, Iowa, wearing a ski mask. The man handed a note to the teller, demanding money and indicating he had a firearm. After handing over the money, the man fled on foot with over $70,000. A bank robbery was reported at the First National Bank of Omaha in Nebraska. Employees said the man entered the bank, gun in hand, ordering the employees to open the bank vault. After being provided with the cash, the suspect fled on foot, taking over $170,000. As the man fled into the woods, a die pack exploded, ruining most of the money and he dumped the bag, which was recovered by police, which contained $163,000. A man entered a first-class credit union in Des Moines, Iowa, with a black and silver pistol. The man approached the teller and jumped over the counter. Gun drawn, he demanded the employees open the bank vault and all the money from the cash drawers. The employees complied, and the man then left the bank on foot with over $300,000 in cash. The man entered a Tennessee Federal Credit Union, pistol in hand, and leapt over the teller counter. The man pressed the gun against the teller's body and demanded she take him to the bank vault. The bank employees complied and gave him the money in the vault, as well as all the cash in the drawers. As they were handing the money over to the masked man, he stated, If he were given a die pack, he would come back and put a hole in your head. The suspect then fled on foot, with over $125,000 in cash. The employees opened the vault. The masked man peered inside, and much to his dismay, found the vault nearly empty. And the man fled, empty-handed. However, the day was not yet over. The same man would charge into a bank in nearby Minnesota. Following the same routine, the employees opened up the vault, but it carried only small bills, and the man once again fled empty-handed. On November 30th, the perpetrator would enter yet another bank in Clive, Iowa, and get away with $25,000. Months had passed, and Chief Saholic was still on the run. The police investigation into Chief Saholic had revealed potential further crimes and were increasing their search efforts, and with the help of the FBI, the search would not last much longer. But as the search drew on, Chief Saholic would become a media sensation.
His arrest got national attention when some football fans became convinced that he is a well-known Kansas City Chief super fan, known on social media as Chief Saholic. He's a fucking bank robber. Yeah. What? Was actually caught with a gun robbing a bank in Texas on Friday. Oh, this is a crazy story. This guy never missed a game and was honestly a pretty chill follow on Twitter. Well, it turns out he's in jail for armed bank robbery. monitor on Saturday night and skipped a court hearing that was March 27th and he now has a warrant out for his arrest and if found he's going to be held on a million dollar bond. There was a man who would put a wolf mask on and actually go into banks with a gun and rob them for money so that he could watch these two assholes play football. It had been four months since Chief Saholic went on the run. It seemed he had hidden behind the guise of a mask for his entire life, concealing his true nature and intentions to the world. But that's all right. This is my love, this is my passion, and I'm not gonna let a stop me. Chief Saholic, AKA Xavier Babudar, had created a persona on social media, a persona muddied in deceit. After graduating KSU in 2016, I was working a warehouse job, making $12 an hour. Today I manage multiple warehouses throughout the Midwest region and make an excellent living, and I'm only 28 years old. Hard work pays off, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It seemed to many that Chief Saholic was living the life. But this couldn't be further from the truth. In 2016, police received a call of a suspicious vehicle in the parking lot of an insurance company. When the police arrived, they found the Babudar family watching the Chiefs game in their silver station wagon. A far cry from the prime seating Babudar was able to obtain for nearly every Chiefs game. This, however, was not an isolated incident. From 2014 to 2017, police were dispatched to remove the Babudars from various business premises. A policeman noted, They often sleep in their vehicle and could be homeless. The car, full of belongings and very little room for three adults to sit. What had changed from 2017 to 2023 that led Xavier Babudar to lead such an extravagant lifestyle? Babudar came from a middle-class family, living in a 2,400-square-foot home located near the ocean and attended elementary school in Laguna Beach, California. But in 2009, everything would change. Babudar's father declared bankruptcy. Shortly thereafter, he told his family that he would be going out to do some community service for a traffic violation but he would never return. The house would be sold in 2005. The Babadar family would now live on the road and would have run-ins with the law seemingly at every turn. In 2009, Babadar's mother, Carla, pleaded guilty for theft in a grocery store in Utah and she was also charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. The mother, Carla, Xavier, and his brother Noah were arrested for forging meal certificates at an all-you-can-eat restaurant. Carla and Noah pleaded no contest to disturbing the peace, but Xavier Babudar was booked in the juvenile hall. Babudar would face a series of petty crime charges for stealing spoon holders and snacks from local stores, 
and was accused of switching merchandise price tags and returning the mistmarked items for a higher price. Throughout his tumultuous upbringing, Babudar's bond with his mother was stronger than ever. Xavier and his mother attended Chiefs and Kansas State games together. He once tweeted that she raised me by herself and took me to my first Chiefs game when I was three. A fan who sold them tickets and sat in the same section remembered Xavier standing over his mom to protect her from the sun on a hot day at Arrowhead Stadium. However, this bond between mother and son would err on the side of criminality. After initially being arrested in December, after fleeing from the credit union with over $150,000, Babudar filed a motion for reduced bail. But a series of phone calls between Xavier and his mother would cast doubt on his true intentions and his mother's. In the calls, the two had expressed concern over whether police would find his car at the gym where he'd parked it. His mom says to him, Thank God I got your phone wallet and a bunch of other stuff out of the glove compartment. Thank God they didn't get your phone, because there's a lot of bad things in that. Surveillance video, he said, showed a woman moving Babadar's car to the back of the gym after the alleged robbery. Police were closing in. Chief Sahalik's time was up. Breaking news. That breaking news involves a chief superfan who is once again behind bars. A chief superfan suspected of robbing three Iowa banks is under arrest after four months on the run. Robbing superfan now back in Kansas City. And today, his first local court date on federal charges for bank theft. These details keep getting wilder and wilder. According to the affidavit, he's now accused of robbing multiple banks. Kansas City Crime Stoppers can now cross Chief Saholic off the most wanted list. Chief Saholic has been arrested. Oh, on the ground, a city where his wolf costume is recognizable, where his face may not have been. His face also unknown in a string of bank robberies laid out by prosecutors, weaving a narrative that the Chiefs fan was funding his game day travels by holding up financial institutions. According to the affidavits, investigators pieced together a slew of evidence from multiple crimes in multiple states that all seem to point to the Chiefs super fan. He's accused of laundering the money through casinos, redeeming more than $1 million in chips. A criminal complaint estimates that the Babudar stole nearly $846,000. He was arrested in Northern California last month. He asked for a court-appointed attorney today, and he's back in court next Wednesday. Xavier Babudar, a.k.a. Chief Saholic, was charged with three counts of armed bank robbery one count of bank theft, 11 counts of money laundering, and four counts of transporting stolen property across state lines. In total, Babadar stole more than $800,000, money Babadar used to fund his fanatic lifestyle. But how were police able to connect him to the string of robberies across the Midwest? Police began looking into unsolved bank robberies after delving into Babadar's financial records and finding that he purchased and redeemed over $1 million in chips. The question was, where was the source of income coming from? In the March 2nd robbery in Clive, Iowa, police matched a pair of gloves the assailant wore to ones found in Babadar's car that were recovered shortly after his initial arrest. Police also found that on the day of the robbery, Babadar's phone utilized a cell tower just two miles from the robbery's location. In photos of the CCTV footage, police believed the gloves to be very similar to the ones found in Babadar's vehicle. On the day of the robbery, Babadar's phone utilized a cell tower 
just 7.4 miles away from the robbery's location. In the surveillance footage, police once again saw gloves similar to those found in Babadar's vehicle. Babadar's phone utilized the cell tower 35.7 miles away from the location of the robbery. The gloves once again matched and Babudar's phone utilized the cell tower just 4.4 miles away from the location. On the same day, a hat was recovered that was worn by Babudar during the robbery and was submitted for DNA testing, and it matched a glove found during the March 2nd bank robbery in Clive, Iowa. In the Wings Financial Credit Union attempted robbery, records showed that Babudar used a cell tower just 1.6 miles away from the robbery's location. In Babudar's second attempted robbery of the Royal Credit Union, he utilized a cell tower 0.8 miles away from the robbery's location, just 11 minutes before the robbery occurred. Police recovered a pair of goggles from Babudar's vehicle that were very similar to the ones seen on the man in the CCTV footage. Babudar also utilized a cell tower 6.7 miles away from the robbery's location. Around the time of each robbery, suspicious financial activity also occurred, with large sums of money being deposited into bank accounts and large sums of money being used in casinos, totaling over $1 million. In the course of this investigation, Eurofiant has determined that Babudar would travel to various locations throughout the Midwestern United States to perpetrate a string of robberies at various banks and credit unions before returning home to the Kansas City metropolitan area to launder these robbery proceeds through area casinos and deposit these proceeds in his various bank accounts. The trial is set to start on January 8th, 2024. This is not Chief Zaholik's last drive. And he believes, and we believe, that when the final whistle blows and all of the facts are known, that he is going to be redeemed in the eyes of his community, in the eyes of his fans, and in the eyes of the Chief's Kingdom. A life defined by fanaticism, criminality, and infamy.